Hi everyone, back again with another short video, and this time, something different. A crusty joystick. And we're going to clean it up and bring it back to life. And yeah, this one is gross. A lot of you might recognize this classic. This is the Wico Command Control Red Ball Joystick. It's Wico, Wico, Wico. I've heard it pronounced many different ways. These high quality joysticks had the same red and black, very sturdy base, but it always had a different flavor top. This is the red ball version. There was a bat version, which had like a red baseball bat type handle on it, and uh, other variants, including one that had interchangeable handles. I got this particular joystick in a recent Commodore 64 haul where all the equipment was in a cardboard box stored outside in a shed, I believe. So you can see the repercussions of that. I think I'll open it up and see what's going on on the inside. Now, fortunately, these joysticks are sealed quite well. This one looks pretty good on the inside, although I do see a few minor issues that I think we can fix and get this thing working. All the Wico command control joysticks had dual fire buttons, one on the base, you can see this one working here, pressing its leaf switch, and the other on the tip of the joystick handle, but you can see here that the leaf switch is permanently closed or in a firing position, and I'm not sure what's causing that. It should be separated like so, so we'll have to see what's causing that. But before I deal with that fire button issue, I want to add some hot glue to the inside to secure the strain relief. On the outer side of the base, the strain relief is pretty much disintegrated, so adding some hot glue here will anchor it down. Uh, as well, on the other side, the fire selector switch is loose, so I've added hot glue there. It's cooled down and everything is stable. And back on the other side, the hot glue I added to the strain relief section is anchoring that down quite well. Now back to the fire button switch issue. I think I've figured out what's going on. The leaf switch assembly isn't sitting properly on the mount and seems to be resting lower than its normal position. So by adding two washers, which are about one millimeter thick and they fit perfectly on the mounts, the assembly seems to stay at the right level without dropping lower than it should. Perhaps the mounting holes have become larger over time and over with use and it was uh, sitting too low. But if I put it back on now with the washers in place, you can see that everything is sitting at the right level. And we now have the proper gap back between the leaves of the switch. And the fire button is working normally. And just before I close it up, I noticed a date stamp in the bottom of the base. 1982. It looks like 12-4-82. So assuming this was uh, assembled in the U.S., we're looking at December 4th, 1982. Over 34 years old. Now, sadly, the only thing I didn't record was me cleaning the outside of the case. But if anyone's interested, here's all the stuff I used. Several sprays of this. One or two shots of this some strategic drops of this, a nice buff with this, some minor scrubbing with this, and a whole whack of these, and these. And when all is said and done, ta-da! From grungy to gorgeous. Turned out pretty good, I must say. For what started out as a joystick that you wouldn't even want to touch, it was so nasty and grimy, a hearty cleanup with minor repairs really brought this joystick back to life. I think it looks great. I'm sure it plays great. And there's one thing left to do. need to test it. And here it is. The most exciting way to test a joystick. The Joystick Testing Program. Yeah, it works.